Hi everybody. Recently I discovered this uh, software called SDR Trunk and it's pretty cool stuff. It allows you to monitor digital trunked radio systems like P25 systems and things like that. So with an SDR receiver and this software you can essentially have sort of a simplistic way of having a, a digital trunking scanner. Uh, software works really well. Um, it's uh, pretty straightforward once you get it set up and it works great. I'm going to make two versions of this video. This version is going to focus on the RTL SDR dongles based on the RTL 2832U chipset. Um, this is probably the, the cheapest way to get into the SDR world. Um, if you go to this website, rtl-sdr.com, click on the RTL SDR store uh, link here. If you scroll down, you'll find where to purchase these things. You can see here, uh, this is the dongle only for $30 currently. You can get that on Amazon. Um, and then for an extra $10, they'll uh, include an accessory kit with some antenna parts and a little stand for the antenna and a suction cup mount, stuff like that. Um, you can also use the cheaper, um, cheaper versions you can find online. I like this particular supplier because of a couple of features. These have the SMA connector on them instead of the um, f more fragile snap-in connector. And they also have a metal case. And these things get reasonably warm when they're operating. So I like having the metal case both from a durability standpoint and also from a thermal standpoint. They, these seem pretty well made. so. Uh, for the few dollars extra these may cost, this is my recommendation, but you can use whatever works for you. Um, so once you have your dongle in hand and you want to get started, uh, we're going to download several pieces of software here. And we'll go through and I'll have you download all of the software up front and then we'll work through installing it. So the first thing to download is the actual SDR trunk software. To download that, you go to this website github.com, that's G-I-T hub.com, slash, capital D, capital S, lowercase h-e-i-r-e-r, -E -E slash SDR trunk, and I'll try to link this when I post the video online. You could also just search for SDR trunk on your search engine and probably find the same site. Once you're on GitHub here, you're, you're going to want to scroll down, find this download link, Click on that, and then scroll down to the whatever the most recent version is right now, which should be at the top. So this is 050 beta 5. I'm going to scroll down a little ways, and I'm going to find this little assets expandable section right here. Click on that, and then you'll see there's several different uh, several different options here. This video is based on Windows, so I'm going to go ahead and download the SDR Trunk Windows x86-64 um, zip file here. And you're going to want to save that someplace convenient that you can find. We'll put all these files in one spot. So you're going to go ahead and download that. How you download that and choose where to save it's going to vary by browser. But one way or another, go ahead and download that. All right, so I've downloaded it. And I uh, chose to save it to a folder I called demo. So I'm on my C drive. I created a directory called demo. You may want to create a directory called SDR trunk or, or whatever works for you. This is just what I did. And I'm going to put all of my files for this demo into this one uh, folder. Um, you may want to create a folder that's not going to have any spaces in the file name. That may be helpful to you on a later step. The next thing you need to download is you need to get a copy of Java. Now, you may already have a copy of Java on your computer. If you are familiar with Java and know how to work with different versions and things, then you, you may be able to skip this part, but I'm going to assume that you don't have it. Um, if you already have it, it's not going to hurt to follow the instructions I'm going to provide here. You'll just have an extra copy, um, but I, this, this way I know it'll work and you'll have what you need. The SDR trunk software is a little bit finicky, at least uh, for some of the operations. So you're going to want JDK 15. So you can go to jdk.java.net slash archive. Scroll down on the list and find the 15.0.2 15 
whatever the current build is of that. Again, we're going to choose the Windows zip file. We'll click on zip here and we'll download that and I'm going to save that into my same directory as the other one. Okay, so that's saved now. I've downloaded the uh, OpenJDK 1502. There's one more utility that you're going to have to download. This one's more about the uh, RTL dongle than the software itself. But you want to go to zadig.akeo.ie. So that's zebra alpha delta india golf dot alpha kilo echo oscar dot india echo. That brings you to this site. And then once you're here, you want to scroll down and find this download section, and then you want to get whatever the current version is, which right now is this uh, Zadig 2.7. We're going to click on this and again save it to uh, that same location where you've been saving the other files. Okay, that downloaded quickly. So there it is. I've got it, and it's in that same spot. Now, for this particular tool, I want to show you another, another web page. This is off of the uh, rtlsdr.com website. So when you, if you have questions about how to use this, you might want to refer to this site. So if you go to rtl-sdr.com, click on the quick start guide. And then if you scroll down a little ways, there's some instructions here about installing some other SDR software. That's not relevant to what we're doing today. But when you get to this section here, it talks some about how to download Zadig. And the most important part starts here around step eight, and we'll be following these directions essentially. So I'll walk you through it, I'll show you how to do it, but if you want another reference, you can refer to this site and uh, get the instructions here. So if you just follow my video, you probably don't need this, but in case you do, there it is. Okay, so we should be done with our browser for now. So here's my folder where I um, created or downloaded these three tools that we needed. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to extract the um, OpenJDK from the zip file and get it set up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down my control key and I'm going to double click this OpenJDK zip file, which should open it in a new window for me like that. And so now we can see I've got this folder and I'm just going to drag and drop that into my demo folder. There we go. I've extracted Java. I'm going to go ahead and close this window. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing with my SDR trunk zip file. So again, I'm holding down my control key, double clicking this, getting it to open in a new window. Here I have my SDR trunk directory. I'm going to drag and drop that into my demo folder. And now that's extracted. Close this window. Okay, now I've got all the software extracted. Now we need to make the uh, dongle, get the dongle ready to work. So at this point, if you haven't, go ahead and plug in your RTL SDR dongle into a USB port on your computer. Um, ideally, you may want to go ahead and hook an antenna up to it. That's not critical to get the software working, but if you actually want to receive stuff, obviously you're going to want an antenna on it. Uh, word of caution at this point, if you've already been using your RTL SDR and have it configured and working with other SDR software, this next step may not be necessary. Um, and if you do proceed with this and you've got some other custom stuff set up with it, it may, may cause it to stop working with your other solutions. But again, I'm assuming that you're setting this up from scratch for the first time. Uh, in which case you'd likely need to do this next step. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this Zadig EXE that we have, we need to right click on it and say run as administrator. Now I'm on Windows 8.1 so your screens may be very slightly different for this step but one way or another you should be able to right click on it and choose run as administrator. When you do that you're going to get some warnings and you're going to have to acknowledge those. In fact my recording screen may go blank or, or things may happen with the video while I'm acknowledging those warnings. But you just need to go ahead and say yes I really do want to go ahead and run this. So I'm going to click run as administrator. Yes I got a pop-up saying do you really want to allow this? I clicked yes and now here's the uh, program running. Now this part gets a little bit tricky. 
because those instructions said to look for uh, the instructions I referenced earlier here I'll pull them back up and show you these instructions state that what I should look for is bulk in interface interface zero um, you'll see on my computer this is not what I need if you read the rest of this it says you're gonna look for something like this or maybe this um, but what we really need to do is make sure that we get the uh, ID like this. So let's let's go through that and I'll show you what that looks like. So your mileage may vary. You may have to do a little sleuthing here. But step one is to go to options and say list all devices. And then hit this drop down. Now what you'll see here is I do have um, some different options. I've got a USB receiver, which, you know... I may be confused and think, well, maybe that could be it. But when I look here and I compare that to the number I'm looking for, I'm looking for 0BDA as the USB ID. This is 046D. So I know that's that's not the thing I want to mess with. Um, but here I do find that I do have this RTL 2383UHIDIR. happens to be one of the possibilities listed. When I select that, I do see that the USB ID matches what I'm looking for. It's 0BDA2838. So once I have this selected, I know that I've got the right um, device selected. And it's very important that you don't get this wrong. If you get this wrong, you will most likely break something else on your PC. So make sure before you proceed that you see this USB ID listed here. Once you have that done, you need to go through this list and you need to find win USB right here. And once you find that, you're going to hit um, reinstall driver. Now yours may say re replace driver. It may say install driver, whatever. You're just going to click this button. So I've clicked it. It's installing the driver. The driver was successfully installed. Close this. Close this. The dongle should be ready now. So once we've got that done, we're going to go back into our uh, our folder here. And to save you a little bit of typing, what I'm going to do is have you go into this JDK folder that you extracted. So now what you should see is whatever the path is where you put these files, and you should see this JDK 1502. Go ahead and click in this address bar here, and you want to copy that. So we're going to copy that path. All right. Once you do that, we're going to go back one step. Now we're going to go into the SDR trunk windows folder. We're going to go into the bin directory. And then we're going to scroll down. And you need to find sdr-trunk.bat. Now, depending on the settings on your PC, you may not be able to see these extensions. You could have extensions hidden. Uh, hopefully, you'll see the type um, column here, and you'll be able to find the one that looks that says Windows Batch. Uh, again, depending on your settings, you may have a totally different view. Yours, yours could look more like this. Um, you know, it could look like this. Um, you can change this usually by right-clicking here and changing to Details. One way or another, though, you need to find sdr-trunk.bat. And it should be of type Windows batch file. Make sure you don't accidentally get the SDR trunk here that doesn't have an extension on it. That one's not going to be what you want. Once you find sdr-trunk.bat, we're going to right-click on it and hit Edit. Now, again, you may get some Windows warnings about this when you hit Edit. You just need to uh, acknowledge those and say, go ahead. So it's going to tell me, so now it's telling me it's protected my PC from this. I'm going to have to hit the more info connection or button on uh, Windows 8 anyway. I have a choice to run anyway, don't run. And I know you can't see this on the video, which is why I'm talking through it for you. I'm going to hit run anyway, and then that brings this up in Notepad. Um, it, it needs to come up in a text editor like Notepad or, or Notepad++ or something like that. Um, you, you can't really edit this in Word or OpenOffice or anything like that. That's not going to go well for you. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to make two changes. I don't know if these are both totally required or not, but if you do these it will work. So I recommend just going ahead and doing it. We're going to type set 
So first of all, I created, I added a couple of blank lines. So it looked like this when I opened it. I had enter a couple of times here to add some blank lines. We're going to type set and we're going to say Java in all caps underscore home equals and we're going to paste the value that we copied a minute ago. And then underneath this, we're going to again type set. We're going to type path equals. We're going to paste that again. We're going to add backslash bin. Make sure you get the backslash key. That's the one that's not on the question mark key. It's the one that's not on question mark. We're going to add a semicolon, a percent sign, path in all caps, and another percent sign. So when you're done, it should look like this. Obviously, your C demo, this may be different for you based on where you decided to extract these, uh, where you decided to extract the JDK. So adjust that accordingly, or really if you copied the way I showed you to, you shouldn't, it should be correct already, so you shouldn't need to adjust it. Once you've, got, once you've done that, go ahead and hit save, file save, or you can hit control S. Go ahead and close your editor. And that should be uh, all that's required to get it set up and ready to run. We're going to go on now into actually launching it, and I will show you how to configure it. We'll do that in a separate video.